Hey folks, this is Vint with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out Gemrush. What you're looking at here today is the digital adaptation of the tabletop game. A tabletop game that I admittedly do not own, though I kind of wish I did because I'm enjoying this one. You can find this version on Steam for about 10 bucks. I don't know if there's a phone version or tablet or mobile version out there. You may have to look. So, what is Gemrush all about? Well, you are digging up this mountain. You start off with one room, and that's where your characters start, and each player gets a character and random abilities to start. Though, whenever you're setting up the game, you can choose your player color, you can also choose what starting skill that you start with. It may be like, um, if you happen to build a room using blue gems, and any cards you use that have blue gems on it, you automatically get back instead of discarding them. Another one might be you can build rooms without using certain gems, but uh, you lose points for doing so and so on. And those abilities won't make any sense to you unless you know how to play. So how do you play this? Well, like I said, you start off in one room and that's where your characters start. And... At the edge of every room, there's four sides. Uh, these, these rooms are in a square. And you're going to be spending these cards that you have in your hand in order to build these rooms. So the left-hand side of the room might need a blue gem and a red gem. The right side uh, to build a room in that direction might need two black gems and a wild gem. I'm just making stuff up. But you get the idea. And there's also a point value next to each of these costs. So you can see how many points you get by digging in that particular direction. And again, in order to dig in that direction and build a room, you have to discard cards from your hand to do it. And the cards that you have in your hand will sometimes have two on it. Sometimes it'll just be one. Um, there's wild gems. There's this aura calcum bar that is on some of these cards that gives you an extra point for using that card. Um, there's this crystal shard, I don't know the exact name, but it'll duplicate any colored gem that you happen to use to, to dig that particular round. So if you have a blue and, uh, this crystal shard and you spend it, you'll actually have two blue, you know what I mean? So it kind of duplicates a gem that you're spending right then and there. That's kind of cool. So you're going to be spending these cards and building rooms, and each room that you build has a special ability on it. Now, because this is a shared grid, whenever you discover a room, it's for the public. So your opponent can land on that room and use its ability. Every turn, you get three movement points and one action. Whenever you use your action, that will end your turn, even if you haven't used all your movement yet. So if you move two spaces, then use your action. And again, your action could be either using the room's ability or just drawing a card. Those are the two actions you can take. And once you do one of those two things, your turn immediately ends, even if you haven't used all your movement yet. That's the typical, that's the typical gameplay flow. It's move, use an action, end your turn. The other player goes, move, use an action, next player takes their turn, and so on, so on, so on. In the competitive mode, the first player to get to 20 points will win the game. In the cooperative mode, which there is a cooperative mode in here, um, you're going to be working together to score as many points as possible within a certain time limit. Every time a player takes their turn, they have to burn three cards. And these cards are permanently removed from the game. And whenever the deck runs out, it's game over. And this typically takes, I think, 25 turns or something like that. In the competitive game, if the deck were to run out, the discard pile would be shuffled and a new, dod, a new draw deck would be created. But in the, in the cooperative game, once the draw deck runs out, that's it. You're going to be just burning cards, burning cards, burning cards. And, you know, whenever the game runs out or whenever all the cards are gone, that's it. And the high score is what you're trying to get. So I, I got to say, I, I really like this game. Um, there's AI in this, though I'm not good at this game. Even There's three modes of difficulty. And I lost to the computer on my first game, 20 to 17. So again, I didn't know what I was doing fully. 
but I did well enough to sort of stay behind him by five points or so the entire time. But just be warned that if you're new to the game, the AI may beat you repeatedly until you get a handle on the gameplay mechanics. Luckily, you can pass and play, meaning that, you know, you can create a game for two players and you can play both players and just mess around and get used to the gameplay mechanics that way and learn the game. Then when you're ready, you can play against AI. There's online and hot seat multiplayer. There's cross-platform play. So I guess my earlier uh, statement that I didn't know if this was on mobile or not, well, apparently it is iOS, Android, Windows, Macs, and uh, Linux versions can all play together. Um, and yeah, it, apparently it's like the digital, or it's like the actual physical board game. So owners of the tabletop game should hopefully find a lot of similarities here, which is nice. And according to the Steam Store page, there's more than 60 room abilities. And again, these abilities will range depending on the different tiles that come up. Some rooms allow you to discard one card of a particular gem color in order to draw four more, and you're stuck with those. Or um, it might be discard this many cards and then pick a color and then you get to keep drawing cards from the deck until you get that many um, that you need. Um, some, you know, some, some abilities will allow you to keep digging through the deck, going through card after card after card until you get to the one that you need. Others will just allow you to draw three from the top, or maybe two from the discard pile, or what have you. So, different room abilities. Some even let you transport, like this mine shaft. It's like a fast travel system. There's one room that was cool. Um, if you take the, the room's action, you draw a card and immediately get a point. That was the action. Just get a point and draw a card. Um, like I said, you can end your turn just by drawing a card without taking the room's action, if you, if you want to. Um, you have a hand limit of four cards, so at the beginning of your turn, if you have more than four, you have to discard down to four. And it, that can be difficult because some of the rooms that you're digging out require, say, six gems. So you have to have typically like a red and a yellow on one card, an orange and a purple on another, or what have you, to make sure you've got enough to dig in that particular direction. And again, in the competitive game, the first player to 20 wins. And I, I gotta say... I really like this one. It stinks that I haven't played it. Uh, this digital version was released back in 2018. And I was always on the fence in picking it up, but um, I'm kind of glad I did because it's actually quite fun. Um, yeah, I think the AI is a bit too difficult for the new player on easy. I wish it, it took more time to just draw cards and be stupid so that the new player can mess around without having to create two players and do it themselves. But other than that, um, I really didn't have any issues with this game. So if you like digital board games, check this one out. If you guys haven't already, subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.